Good morning, New York, and welcome to the 8th Annual Jerusalem Post Conference. We are thrilled to be here today. After 71 years, Israel is a country with amazing accomplishments and great promise. It is a pillar of stability and a beacon of light in a dark and dangerous region. 71 years ago, the world and many of Israel's own founding fathers never would have imagined that the Jewish state would turn into the great success that it is today. A Jewish and democratic state surrounded by totalitarian regimes, a place where there is freedom of religion, a vibrant society, an economic superpower, and one of the most powerful militaries in the world. Nevertheless, it is no secret that Israel today faces many daunting challenges. After 71 years, Israel has yet to reach the stage where it can rest and lay down its weapons. And he's yet to reach the stage that his founding fathers have yearned for, even maybe more so today than in the past. It needs to be vigilant as the Middle East continues to be engulfed in a historic upheaval, carrying with it an unprecedented sense of uncertainty. Today, we will benefit from an insider's tour of the region, from Iran to Gaza, Syria to Egypt, the deadlock in the peace process with the Palestinians, and of course, Israel's strategic ties with the United States and the relationship between Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and President Donald Trump. These are just some of the issues our speakers will tackle for us. The Jerusalem Post will soon celebrate 87 years. And as a paper, we've tried to carry on the tradition of what our founder, Gershon Agron, envisioned back in 1932 to create a newspaper in Israel that could tell the world what was happening in this ancient land, but also within the wider region. Over the years, we've grown. We're obviously no longer just a leading newspaper in print, 
but we are the most widely read English language website in Israel and the diaspora and serve as an unwavering and reliable source of news for what happens in Israel, the Middle East, and across the Jewish world. The issues we all know are tough, and they often can be divisive, especially in today's political climate. This year, with elections coming in Israel, as well as soon here in the United States, it's even more divisive than in the past. But let's remember our role as a newspaper. We're not an advocacy organization that pushes one single agenda or one single side of a political spectrum. We don't align ourselves with one political party. We're supposed to be a place for people to hear a wide range of opinions and views from across the political spectrum. I always feel that if we read or listen to just what we already believe, what's the point? We need to be challenged. We need to think out of the box. What will we achieve otherwise? A newspaper, and the whole point of a newspaper, is to ask those tough questions. And that is what this con conference is all about, to debate and ask the tough questions. As the primary newspaper for the Jewish world, the Jerusalem Post, I feel, is carrying out its role faithfully. We take the issues at the heart of controversy in the Jewish community and tackle them head on. The role of a newspaper isn't to shy away from those issues, it's to embrace them. At the paper, we've always strived to bring you, our readers, perspectives from across the spectrum, the left and the right, some you read and agree with, some you can't even begin to imagine. But that's our purpose. Our job is not to tell you what to believe, but is to give you the tools and the information so you can make the educated opinions and decisions on your own. So here's what I ask. Our cardinal rule today is that we be respectful. You don't have to agree with everything you hear, but I ask that you listen and let our speakers speak. That is the purpose of today's gathering. Israel as a story has always marveled the world. It's a tale of an ancient people that returned to its historic homeland, established a state, achieved the impossible, didn't just survive, but it persevered and prospered. At the Jerusalem Post, we are proud to be able to tell you and share with you that story on a 24-7 basis. Before we get started, I'd like to thank our sponsors for today's conference, and last but not least, the two people that make this possible. The Jerusalem Post CEO, Ronit Hassin Hochman, and of course, Eli Azur, our newspaper's owner. Thank you both very much. And with that, I'd like you to, to sit back and watch this short film about our newspaper. 